Our cities today have multiple severe issues which are only getting worse, and most of them are caused by urban motorization. The five main issues we can identify are as follows. Number one, noise pollution. And the YouTube user Not Just Bikes already did a great coverage of this in his video entitled Cities Aren't Loud, Cars Are Loud. Through motorization, we lost our right to peace and quiet. Those are now behind a paywall, namely areas that are quiet and have good connections to the center and are consequently ultra expensive. Problem number two is of course air pollution. Now aside from the early deaths and the respiratory problems, air pollution can literally lower your IQ if you grew up in a polluted area and have you develop all kinds of psychological problems later on. Problem number three is simply lack of space. Our streets used to be massive social spaces. Now we use them as transit arteries and parking lots. Damn, it almost sounds like this was some kind of business scheme from the car industry so they can sell us more cars. Problem number four is safety. Since our streets were given over to cars, they are no longer safe to be on. Inside cities, you cannot let your children go play on the street since they would get run over. Similarly, all pets have to stay indoors for the same reason. And so problem number five is overheating. 2021 was already the hottest summer ever in some places and this trend will only get worse. Now of course we have had massive heat waves even in the past, but the problem is that in the meantime we turned our cities into black cauldrons of asphalt with metal boxes in it. And this makes cities practically uninhabitable during a major heat wave. So these are the five most most immediate problems we face. And the solution? One word, super blocks. Superblocks are the closest thing we get to a silver bullet type solution. They can solve all the aforementioned problems by design. So what exactly are superblocks? In short, they are human-friendly areas of the city where all public space belongs to pedestrians and cyclists and where cars are treated as guests. Barcelona has been a trailblazer in this regard, its superblocks being a massive success, uh, no pun intended. As of now, Vienna is also preparing its first superblock, so good for them. So how do you make a superblock? It's very easy actually, and cheap. Step 1. Find an area delineated by major roads. This will be the initial area of the superblock. Ideally, it should have mixed zoning and existing public transit links which connect it to other parts of the city. A metro or train station are the best in this regard, but trams and buses can also do the job. Step 2. Reorganize directions of traffic. In practice, this means strategically placed one-way streets. Arrange them in a way that it is possible to drive in and out of the area, but not through it. Eliminating transit traffic is the key to the superblock design. Bicycles and street-level public transit should be exempt from this, of course. And at this point, most of the work is already done. Isn't that great? And all it took was putting up some one-way street signs. That being said, these measures must be followed up by others, namely, step three, limit parking for non-residents. Without this step, you your superblock will just become an inner city parking lot. Only residents should be able to park their cars inside and the pricing should disincentivize car ownership, let alone having multiple cars. Pricing should also take into account size and propulsion. A person owning a Ford F350 should pay much more than someone with a Nissan Leaf. Step 4. Turn streets into mixed traffic spaces. Once there are no clearly delineated traffic lanes and there are people all around, drivers will automatically be more careful. No, really. This solves both the lack of space and the safety issues. Due to our previous measures, there are much fewer cars than before, meaning a ton of former road and parking space is freed up and the streets can now be shared by all. We now have space for bike lanes, restaurant terraces, and, very importantly, rows of trees to keep things cool during the summer. Step 5. No, that was it. Congratulations. You just made an entire district much more livable for everyone, but mainly for the silent majority, the non-drivers. And all it took was two main steps and two follow-up ones. The noise and air pollution are now gone, we freed up a ton of space, there is no threat of getting run over, and the street no longer turns into a frying pan during summer. This is how we take our streets back from cars and make cities livable once more. This is the future of urban planning. It's easy to organize and rather cheap to implement. All you need is a political leadership not made up of car-centric boomers. Oh wait. At this point you might be thinking, okay, superblocks are nice, but how do I get one in my city? You know, I'm not from Vienna or Barcelona. To which I say, don't worry, there is a way. Even if you live in places like Phoenix or Miami. And so you have two main options really. Number one is to vote for a political party which is pro-decongestion and they have a chance of getting into the local legislature. Number two is to join a local advocacy group for public transportation, decongestion, that sort of thing. Attend meetings and events, get to know people, 
people, network, organize. Now, chances are you're not going to be advocating for super blocks right off the bat, especially if you live in America. Depending on how far gone your city is, you'll have to begin in different places. So, for example, someone living in a traditional European city core might just go ahead and advocate for super blocks right off the bat, while someone living in Phoenix or Miami or other affronts to God might need to begin somewhere else. For example, abolishing parking minimums would be a good start. Or if that's not an option, just try to reduce them. Any step in the right direction is by definition a good step. So, there you go, I guess. Super blocks and the way to achieve them. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll be seeing you next time.